Hey guys, in today's video, I want to start a new experience. An experience that I believe will be useful both for students already enrolled in my WordPress theme development courses, as well as for those who don't know the courses yet. I'm gonna start answering the most interesting questions my students send me. This will help complement what the students already learned in the courses, and it will also be very useful for those who don't know my material yet. I won't be answering all the questions on video, only the most interesting or the most frequent ones. I think this will help a lot of people, both inside and outside my courses. So let's go! I'll start by answering a question that I get a lot. One of the questions comes from um, the Udemy forum, which is one of the platforms on which I teach. This one, for example, is from student Jamil. Sorry for the pronunciation. <laughs> he asked me. Does homepage.php replace pagehome.php uh, in the newer version of WordPress? Aren't they the same thing? And there are other similar questions in the forum. Well, this is a very common question, especially for those who are starting to learn how to create a theme in WordPress. People always struggle to understand how all well these template files work, why they exist, etc. We have a file called home.php, another one called frontpage.php, we have the page.php, index.php, and you also have other possibilities. And this makes developers very confused, especially those who are most used to creating pages, say, simpler, only using HTML, CSS, and pure PHP. I myself had a hard time trying to understand this at first. I only managed to understand WordPress the third time I sat down to learn it but I'll show you that the logic is easy. Well, deep down, all of these questions are about the same subject. How do you determine the look of a home page in WordPress? Here's where things get tricky. There are many ways to do that. And that's what I find most interesting about WordPress. There are a lot of possibilities for almost everything. To help understand this subject, I've separated here uh, the theme I teach you to build in, uh, in my theme development course. This is the home page of the theme already finished. Here I have uh, the header, a slideshow, the sections, a list of posts from the blog, a map, and the theme's footer. And here I have the admin of my WordPress installation. So how do I define what will appear on my WordPress homepage? Well, there are several ways. You can choose any of them, but basically what controls it is a WordPress setup uh, that is here under Settings, Reading. Here under Your Homepage Displays, WordPress allows you to configure the homepage in two ways. First, display your latest posts or display a static page. And here in the second option, you have the possibility to choose between two types of static pages. One that will serve as the basis for the home page of the site, and another one for the posts page, the site's blog. By the way, for those who don't know what a static page is, let's say in a very brief way that those are the pages you create using the pages menu, add new. So everything here is a static page, right? So here you can choose uh, one of the pages to be used as the home page and another for the posts page, okay? In my case, uh, on my sites, I always create a blank page called home. Let me open up this page for you to see it. So do you see it? It's a blank page, okay? All right, going back here. And here for the post page, I choose a page called blog, which is also blank. Okay, with that in mind, let's play a little uh, with these options here. What happens when I say I want the home page to show my latest posts? Let's see it. So refreshing the home page. Well, uh, now we have a very different look. Basically, the home page became a list of posts. Why does that happen? And how does WordPress decide what will appear on the homepage? Well, to help us understand this, I'm going to install a very useful plugin called Show Current Template. What this plugin does is uh, it points out on the front end which template files are being used 
to create the look of some WordPress theme page. So let's do that. Now refreshing the home page. The plugin indicates here that the index.php file is the main template file that is being used to design this page. But how does WordPress know it has to load this index.php? And another question, at the beginning of this video I said that there are all the files that cause confusion in people's heads. The homepage.php, the frontpage.php, page.php and so on. What are these other files for? And why did WordPress choose index.php over these other files? Well, this has to do with a little thing called template hierarchy. This is nothing more than the internal order that WordPress establishes to load any file in any moment of execution of any page. When I tell WordPress that the home page shows the latest posts, the loading order is as follows. First, among the theme files, WordPress looks for a file called front hyphen page.php. If it doesn't exist, it looks for one called home.php. Finally, if none of these exist, the last option is to call a file named index.php. Look how interesting, in a common HTML page, the index is the main file. But in WordPress, we say that it's a fallback file. It's not the main option, say, but it's an important file. That's why it's wrong to create a WordPress theme without an index.php file. WordPress will always need this file at some point. Well, let's see this hierarchy working in practice. As you've noticed, the file being loaded here is index.php. It means that WordPress couldn't find any of the other files to load. That's because uh, they don't exist in my theme. If I open the theme files here in my editor, you realize that I don't have a file called front-page.php, which will be the first one on the list in the hierarchy and neither home.php, which is the second one on the list. But I do have this index.php. So let's do the following. Let's create a file called home.php here. So we're gonna start from the opposite order of the hierarchy. And I'll be writing anything in here. Now reloading the page. Have a look. Now the one controlling the page is home.php. However, if there is a file called front-page.php, as it is the highest in the hierarchy, it will control the page instead. So let's see it. Look at that. <laughs> the interesting thing is that now, for example, I can create the whole structure of the file that will control the page look. For example, let me paste the contents of the index.php in here. Do you get it? The front page.php is now in charge. And what defines everything that will appear on the page is the file content. In this case, we got some function calls, a loop, a bit of HTML. Okay, with that in mind, let's go back to the reading settings. And I'll choose the static pages I want to be displayed on the home page. And I'll also delete the files I have created earlier. Well, now what defines the look of the page is a file from my theme called page-home.php. What is the order followed by WordPress here? Here it depends on whether or not you've selected an item, because uh, you can select only one of them if you want, right? You just can't do it like this. If you leave them unselected, WordPress automatically returns to the previous default option above. So if you save it now, see it? Now this one here is selected. If you select a static page to use as your home page, the order to follow is this. 
First, WordPress looks for the front page.php file. If it doesn't exist, it looks for a file that starts with page hyphen followed by the slug of the chosen static page. Uh, later, I'll explain this more clearly. If it doesn't exist, it looks for a file called page.php. And lastly, if none is found, it loads the index.php. Well, with the practical example I used before, you must have already understood how this order works. So I won't be creating the files again. I could have chosen any of these options. In my case, what I'd like to do is choose the second option, which is to create a file called page hyphen, followed by the slug of the static page I choose here. It works like this. Uh, let's suppose I want the, the home page to be this, uh, this home page here. So I create a file called page hyphen home.php. That's because if I look at the page table, the page slug is home. Uh, for example, if I had chosen uh, the contact page, the file would have to be called page-contact.php, right? If I check the page-home.php file, this is where I call everything I got on the home page. The header, the slideshow, the service section, the loops that create the post list, and everything else I have on the page. Well, uh, then you could ask me, but what if I want to add content to the home page, which now is uh, just a blank page, just to display this content on the home page? I don't want to depend on writing code. I want to create content visually. Well, my answer is that uh, then you don't have to do everything I've done here. Just a very simple loop will do. For example, let me simplify this file's content. Uh, I'm going to leave only a very basic loop here. Now I can call the content that is inside the editor and it will show up on the home page. Got it? That's how, for example, you're going to work with a page builder plugin. Let's suppose you want to install uh, Elementor to design the home page. You just need something like that code, alright? I've already tested and it works. Now to wrap up, post page. The loading order here is uh, we get first the home.php file. If it doesn't exist, the index.php file is loaded. In my case, my index.php file is always reserved to show the blog page. Index.php is what WordPress also calls the default template. You can see this uh, if I open one of the pages for editing. So let's go. Here under page attributes, template. This default template here means index.php. Did you know it? Now you know it. You can create all the templates if you want, um, including a template to be controlling the home page if you want. If you're watching this video inside my course, you can take a look at uh, one of the lectures at the beginning of section number three, in which I talk about how to use page templates. On YouTube, it can be a subject for another video. Who knows? Maybe in the future. But I invite you who don't know my courses yet to get to know them. The links for enrollment are in the video description just below. Subscribers to this channel and people who like my content here on YouTube can take advantage of the massive discount I'm offering today. You'll have access to all the lessons and video, you'll learn how to create your themes like a real pro, and you'll be able to give a new meaning to your career as a developer or as a web designer or whatever area you're working in. Or even if you're still a student, you get my premium support too. Today WordPress is in more than 30% of websites. This market has lots of opportunities for those who know how to develop custom themes. Those people are making money either creating themes for a specific client or selling their own themes, so don't miss out my friend. 
More than 14,000 students are enrolled in one of my courses only at Udemy and you gotta be one of them too. Just click on one of the links just below and sign up for one of my courses today. So that's it and that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the explanation. If you like it, subscribe to this channel, hit the like button and also activate notifications so you don't miss the next videos. See you next time!